Hello everyone, so we are going to present about the analysis of poetry, Cupid and my campus fee by John Lilly and my name is Kikris Amalia. My name is Amalia Kevela. And my name is Arsita Febrianti. Yes. So the first, we are going to talk about the poet. Next. John Lilly was born in 1553 in England. He received his bachelor degree in 1573 and his master degree in 1575 from Magdalen College. He started his literary career shortly thereafter. There he gained fame with the publication of two prose romance, Euphus, The Anatomy of Wit, in 1578 and the youth of and his England in 1580, which together made him the most fashionable English writer of the 1580s. Euphus is a romantic intrigue told in letter inter nah. interspersed oh, general discussion on such topics as religion, love, an epistolary style. He really used a unique style in his writing. This affected type of writing style has a lot of similes or comparison using the words like or as. As in your hair is as smooth as velvet and alliteration or using multiple words that start with the same letter or the same sound such as Peter Pipe Peter Piper pick a pack of pickled peppers, mythology and nature. Lily used this writing style in his two novels. The next. This is the story which used by Lily to create the poem. The great king Alexander had conquered the city of Thebes and take prisoner the beautiful and virtuous Kampaspi, whom he promised to treat gently. In Athens, at that time was Diogenes, the ill-tempered philosopher. The serpent managed to complain to the servants of Plato and Apelles, the painter, that Diogenes was a man of exceedingly frugal habits and that his servant, in consequence, often went hungry. Also in Athens were Plato and Aristotle and several other great philosophers whom Alexander had called to his headquarters. The great thinker disputed the difference between divine and natural and natural causes until Alexander came to them and asked each a difficult question about such things as animals, gods and men, life and death, and the composition of the world. After each philosopher had answered right wisely, Alexander departed satisfied with their sagacity. Then the agents entered and berated them for to, to dying to the king. Upon the entrance of Manus and his fellow servants, after the, deper, the departure of the philosopher, there ensued a witty exchange between the agents and the servant in which Diogenes abused them all. Next. During a long dialogue in the marketplace, Alexander admit his love for campus B, at which his passion has horrified. While his loyal general decried love as a weakener of a man, Alexander defended the passion and told Hephaestion to allow him to love in peace. Alexander seen Diogenes in his thought, went to him and asked if he had no reference for kings, to which Diogenes replied that he had none and wished nothing from anyone. Apelles entered and said that the portrait he was painting of Campus B was not quite finished. While Campus B posed for the painting, Apelles praised her beauty, but Campus B saying that she did not believe man flattery. Cut short the painter's question about her feelings toward love with a request that he get on with the painting. Next. 
this is the illustration when the campus view was painted by a uh, palace. Next. Then, although several of Alexander's lieutenants declared their concern for King's martial inactivity, Alexander was planning a campaign against Persia. After telling Hepatian that he wished only a brief respite for, from war, the conqueror went to talk with Apelles and Campesby about painting. Apelles excused his delay by saying that Campesby was so beautiful that it was difficult to paint her as she really was. Alexander was pleased with the work and his love for Campesby grew even greater, despite Hepatian's warning against love. Returning to his house, Avalis, in a long soliloquy, revealed his despair over his hopeless love for Campaspi, whom he knew he could never obtain because she was loved by a king. In a melancholy song, he praised her beauty and harmony and bemoaned his helpless condition. The next slide will be explained by Awalia. Cupid and Compass B. Cupid and my Compass B played at cards for kisses. Cupid paid his stakes, his quiver, bow, and arrows. His mother's dove and theme of sparrows. Loses them too, then down he throws. The color of his lips, the rose, growing on, on his cheeks, but none knows how. With this, the crystal of his brow, and then the dimple of his chin, all this did my campus win. At last, he set her both with his eyes. She won, and Cupid blinded rice. Oh, love, has she done this to thee? What shall alas become of me? So the first stanza um, in this poem, Lily shows us Campes a court beauty that he is gambling at cards with Cupid, the boy goddess of love. Evidently, Cupid is trying to win a kiss from Campes, but he keeps losing. It shows Cupid ready to risk and lose his identity, identity and his attributes for the love of Campes. From his and his mother, mother Venus, external to his own attributes. So, um, Cupid give everything to win campus love, even his mother's attributes. And then, the second stanza, campus wins over and over, wins all Cupid's stuff, and eventually wins all of his godlike good looks as well. His red lips, the red flush on his cheeks, his fine brow, his dimple, and finally his eyes. Lily ends the poem with a poetic complaint and elaborate com or, or elaborate compliment. If this woman is able to so completely dominate a, a god, how can the poet resist her power and charms. Another way to say this is if the god of love himself was willing to gamble away everything he owned for one kiss from Campes, how can anyone hope to resist her charms? Now Arsita will explain the next slide. I'm going to explain the setting and the theme. Um, Compass P becomes a generic poetical synonym for a man's mistress. The English University with and poet John Lilly, um, 1553 until 1606, who produced his comedy Compass P, also 
uh, wrote this poem in 1584. This poem was produced in Elizabethan era. The theme of this poem is love. And the next is the rhyme. Um, the rhyme is so, um, rhyme is, um, we can see the rhyme A, B, a, B, 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 C, C, D, D, B, B, E, E. So it is the vowel in the end of the line. Like Cupid and my compass be played. C is A. And then add cards for cases. This B, different, different vowels. And then Cupid paid. So played and paid is the same vowel. So A. It's symbolized by A. And then this takes a squiver, bow and a rose. A rose and then spare rose b b throws rose it's just the same and then knows how and his bro c then chin win d ice rice b and t me e and e this poem has 15 lines yeah. and two standards 16 14 14 lines right so actually this is it should be one. it should be one yeah at card for kisses keep it pay 14 lines and two stanzas um there are eight stanzas and six stanzas it has the closest meter which is iambic tentrameter okay the next It is already explained by Archita. Okay. Then. <clears throat> this is the figurative language or maybe poetic device. The first is the curl of his lip, the roots growing on his cheeks, but no one knows. No one knows how. It's a um, metaphor. The coral express the, uh, no, not express. the color, the color, the color of uh, the lips. his lip, and the rose growing on cheeks means that um, the rose color of his cheeks. Both are, um, okay. both are. So it's just like um, the color of the rose. It's the same with the color of um, the, the cupid cheek. cheek. Yeah. And, and the second is apostrophe. Apostrophe means um, wait. Apostrophe means a poetic device where the writer address a person or thing that isn't written with the exclamation. exclamation. In this poem, the poet addressing something as all love. So, the <clears throat> it is um, expressed with, sometimes expressed with all. Oh, love, or oh, what, um, etc. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, this is the end of our presentation. Good night, everyone.